In episode one, I left Chichester Harbour in gusting 30 knot conditions and had a wild ride down to Selsey Bill, where I managed to get through the tidal race, only to crash land on Elma Beach, breaking my foot clean in half. In the next leg of my journey, I leave the West Sussex countryside behind and pass Brighton, the furthest east I had ever windsurfed back in March 2022, and sail onwards into the unknown waters off the East Sussex coast. Oh, this is epic! This is uh, renowned for being one of the worst beaches on the south coast to launch off. I was going to face one of my biggest fears of the whole trip, the highest chalk cliffs in Britain, Seven Sisters and Beachy Head. But if I could just get round those cliffs, the crossing to France could be no more than 60 miles away in any westerly, southwesterly or southerly wind direction. And if the right forecast came, I considered anywhere from Eastbourne onwards to be fair game to launch myself way offshore the French coast completely alone. So welcome back to day three, day three of the mission but actually day five because I've spent a couple of days going back to Haley to get a new fin and I've got to thank a number of people uh, but particularly Chris Gibson, who's uh, lent me this beautiful new fin. It's 42 centimetres, which will be plenty for going downwind. And thanks to Rob Kent as well for putting me in touch and some uh, top tier advice. And as a reminder, here's the sorry sight of the fin that I managed to smash up on a crash landing here at Elmer Beach. Uh, a spot of food poisoning, we won't go into the detail there, but hey ho, all good fun. And I'm back on the horse today and uh, I would like to get to New Haven maybe or as a stretch target to get round the uh, beachy head and even make it to Eastbourne which is probably about 55 miles away from here. There we go back in action. Well, that's a world I recognise. Some nice top of racing going on. You'd probably be waddling along at three knots max on a shortboard in this. Okay, just coming up to Worthing Pier. Always good to see the sights. I think this one's actually older than Brighton Pier. I've got to say, half the fun is spotting things from a very long way away and then getting closer and realising it's something completely different to what you thought. So, to me, ahead is a fleet of yachts, but it could well be something completely different, like, I don't know, a flock of birds or some buildings or anything, or maybe some chalk cliffs, I have no idea. You're just going to believe what you want to believe. It's quite fun, really. Okay, I've now been going exactly two hours and I've done 14.7 miles. So making a pretty consistent seven, seven and a bit knots, which is, which is pretty good, pretty easy. And uh, it looks like I might be on for beachy head today. Never say never. I think I'll have a break once I've done 20 miles. Quite fancy a drink. <coughs> In order to get this shot, I unscrewed the GoPro boom clamp to turn it 90 degrees, then switched on the 360 mode on my GoPro Max before dropping the sail. Through the app, you can then move around the field to render a changing view to make it look like the camera is turning when in fact it's not. Pretty cool feature, I think. Yeah, it seems to be picking up again. And I think I've got my target now. And that's New Haven. I believe it's about seven, eight miles ahead. A gap in the cliffs. 
Yep. Is that uh, is that New Haven? Is that New Haven? Well, I asked the Good Samaritan twice, and after his initial interest, we couldn't hear each other, so continued our separate ways. While he seemed to think that I had it under control, the wind was dying by the second, so soon after it picked up. I still needed to get another five miles to the gap in the cliffs. It was after this clip that the GoPro battery died. Okay, this is really getting uncomfortably light. I'm only doing five knots. And I've just got to get to New Haven now because the rest is cliffs. So, I've landed, as you probably guessed, at New Haven. And I'm delighted to be here. This is somewhere I've never been. And I've got here, I did check the ferry times before I set off this morning. Not that I could go any quicker, but I've checked the ferry times and there is a boat leaving to Dieppe in about 15 minutes and I'm hoping to catch it on the drone. In fact, it's just coming out of port now. But I've navigated my way around this huge breakwater through sort of two arms. And well, I had quite a bit of wind anxiety there at the end. Another subtle, yet not so subtle, little stowaway. So there we go, the New Haven and Seaford Sailing Club. The group you see here could not have been more welcoming, and I was honoured to be invited to join them, including Terry the Commodore, for supper, before using the changing rooms and showers, then, with no accommodation available in New Haven, hopped on the train back to London. Okay, it's Friday the 28th of July and it's day four of the mission and I'm heading on the train back down to New Haven to make my way around Beachy Head is the plan and I'm just studying marinetraffic.com to have a look at the boats and uh, the tides as well because we're on neap tides at the moment which is great so low tide at the middle of the day and then it will be in my favour pushing eastward in the afternoon. So I'm looking at marine traffic and seeing the yachts coming round westward right now and hopefully I'll have company with a few yachts or other boats this afternoon heading east. Okay we're rolling so I've just met Simon here who is looking very official with his New Haven and Seaford Sailing Club stash, his jumper there. Simon was just saying a few interesting things. Well, about um, about the summer and how the uh, the landscape is here. So uh, thanks well, for those ideas. This is this is uh, renowned for being one of the worst beaches on the south coast to launch off. It was steeply shelving and shingle. However, if you've mastered the beach here, and I have done many many times, then you can go anywhere. But uh, no, so we're nicely in the crook of the bay at Seaford. Uh, we've got New Haven on one side, we've got Beachy Head on the other side. Uh, and I think sailing here is the most fun I've ever had dressed in rubber. <laughs> Excellent, good to know, good to know. But um, yeah, we we're just talking about the slight optical illusion of the coastline because the ferry actually goes round Beachy Head on its way to Dieppe, I think. Yeah. And so uh, you've got this sort of southwesterly angle, or southeasterly, I should say. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a very, really bleak angle. If you if you took off from the beach at right angles here and kept going, you'd miss Cornwall to the right, you'd miss Brittany to the left, and you'd end up on the the uh, South American coast. So we advise people not to go too far out to sea. Right. Good. I'll uh, try and avoid that eventuality. Okay. Well, very nice to meet you, Simon. Thank and you well, for those best, best of luck on your journey. Thanks See so how much. How far you get? Absolutely. Nice one. Thanks very much. I came to realise, having watched the dinghies launching and landing that the shore dump was partly to thank for the great community vibe at the club. Two or three people would help every single person as they land, so it seemed perfectly normal for this boy to come bounding through the waves to send me on my way. Very nice people. I've just put the centreboard down to give myself a bit of stability and stop myself getting sideswiped onto the cliffs. 
because it's still quite a swell running. Anyway, I've now done a mile and I think it's only 15, 15 or 20 round to Eastbourne. The water's getting really unstable here. Ah, some reflections from the cliff. Well, that's a change of scenery, isn't it? <laughs> wow, amazing. John O'Dunnett is the only person ever to have windsurfed around Britain unsupported. After reading his amazing account, Long Standing Ambition, in 2017, I drew a map grading the British coastline from green, easy, to red, hardest, then sent that map to Jono to see whether he agreed. This stretch, the Beachy Head Cliffs, I considered an intermediate orange, but interestingly, Jono thought that Dover Straits should be red. Anyway, unlike climbers who can grade their climbs, the sea, of course, changes the goalposts every day. The problem is the tide's slightly against me, so we've got wind over tide. I've got to remember this is a once in a lifetime experience and I'm enjoying it. Just keep telling myself, I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> it is pretty nerve inducing, I have to say, but there's no point being scared. Fear does not help with windsurfing at all. I really think fear creates danger. It's not that danger creates fear. It's the other way around. So yeah, I'm just enjoying it. Just pretend I'm sailing down the hailing seafront. That's where my mind is. I know I can do this. The visibility's cleared up. The mast foot's in the right position. I'm on my six meter. All is well. That's all, all you need to know. Nothing to do with the fact that those waves are crashing against the cliffs and there's nowhere to stop for absolutely miles very much like club bass shall we say <laughs> okay. just heading up on the big waves and then bearing away whenever i can there we go that's better bearing away again now but the beauty of low tide apart from emergency landing opportunities is less reflection of waves from the cliff. I've got the Seven Sisters cliff behind me and I've got Beachy Head directly under my sail. That's really cool, I can see some uh, paragliders on top of the hill. Right, I've definitely passed the lighthouse now. So I'm just resting with my head against this groin here at Eastbourne Marina. I've uh, stopped because, well, frankly, a rest is very nice and I'm delighted to get round Beachy Head with no hiccups, didn't drop the sail once, didn't fall in and very pleased to time my jibe. So it was a one jibe wonder and then I was on the ley line for the Eastbourne Pier. So a couple of interesting things here. Well, maybe one interesting thing. We've got the uh, Mortello Tower. Mortello, I think it's Mortello. I will double check that. And uh, over a hundred of these were built from East Sussex all the way around to Suffolk in the 18th and 19th century to keep out the French or as defense against the French at least. And uh, well, they're dotted all along this coast and I'm gonna get my drone out and take some shots for you.
I had made it to Eastbourne and into what I considered to be the launch zone to France, but given the time of day, I was going to progress to the next town east, which was absolutely stunning, and despite being an easy day trip from London, seemed like it should be in Cornwall. Low tide at the moment, but it's coming in, it's in my favour, which is great. Wind's in my favour, all cool. A couple of wing foilers up here. I feel like I'm doing some sort of inventory of the number of wing foilers and windsurfers on the south coast. A sort of doomsday book of uh, wind sports. Here's one chap behind me, Hi up. on his wing. Great sight. How you doing? All good? It's just dropped off a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. Cool, enjoy. Amazing how the uh, tide has flattened off these uh, sea conditions. Whoa! One of the key elements of long distance windsurfing is the sheer range of conditions that you have to handle. This is partly a result of being out the whole day instead of a standard three hour shortboard blasting session. It's suddenly got quite windy. It's also because of the local variations in weather once you've covered some ground, and of course, always without changing sail size. I better put a drive in soon. Well, at one point, I thought I'd never say it, but here I am at Hastings, and uh, mission complete for today. It was full on, full on. So chapter one, round uh, Beachy Head and uh, round Seven Sisters to Eastbourne. And then the second leg was really easy, six, seven knots all the way until the wind suddenly kicked in, 20 knots from behind, maybe gusts of 22. And I was absolutely firing on the swell, which is great fun. But then attempted to come in just by the pier and thankfully thought better of that. So I came round the sea wall into the old town, which is where all these very pretty uh, fishing boats are stored. And I'm going to take some photos of these. It's just stunning, picture perfect. You think you're in Cornwall or something. And here we are in Kent. It's just divine. So looking forward to exploring. Our lady, RX-16. Wow. I don't think this has seen much action recently. There's wind blowing straight through it. Look at that cockpit. Wow. Incredible. A doer upper. This one's in better shape. So a very kind lady has just explained to me that these sheds used to be for hanging nets for fishermen. So you hang them up and then you can weave. So it just so happens that I've landed at the end of the beach, which is the old town, which really is by chance. But uh, it's great, it's a great chance because this place is actually stunning, completely unexpected. Well, that makes a lot of difference. I've uh, checked into my hotel, had a shower. The Alexander, as it turns out, as one of the last options on booking.com is absolutely cracking. Your standard high ceiling Victoriana top spot. So very grateful for that and uh, absolutely famished. So I'm gonna try to resist going into the very first place. I see this is not a time for fine dining. I'm gonna eat a fair amount having missed lunch. So um, I'm thinking double fish and chips, something like that with a, uh, a beer or two to wash it down. Oh, amazing, thank you so much. Incredible. Thanks. <laughs> well, cheers, cheers to Hastings. Well, I really started to feel like I was going on holiday. 
and in the next episode, finally take the leap and cross over to France completely alone. <laughs>